This is just an intro to basic editing in Premiere. We're not diving into professional. This is just beginner editing. When you open up the program, you get your welcome screen. You either click on something you've already started, like a project, or you start from scratch. For your example, you're going to start from scratch because of what you're working on. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to click New Project, and we dive into here. So up here is where you name it, and this is where your file is going to go. So I'm going to call this tutorial, and I'm going to have it go to my desktop just for the fun of it. Normally, you put it in a job folder where all your other jobs go, but there we go. Okay, so any questions so far? We just gave it a name and said where the file's going. It just looks like After Effects right now. Mm -hmm. You always start off with a blank canvas, and that's because you import your footage and then you work off of that, so don't be intimidated by it. So a typical job folder for me would look like, start here. So this is an example of what one of my projects looks like. You know, it's the folder, the project, the date. And normally I put my final renders in one folder and my project saves, like my work files, they would go in there. I put it out there just because, you know, I was working too fast that day. So you want to keep everything together, all your artwork, all your videos, all your footage. It's like when you package a job for print. Make sense? Mm -hmm. All right. So... Let's pretend we'll use this file, actually. We're going to go right here. And any footage you want to bring in, you got three ways of doing it. You could double click on an empty spot inside your project panel, like that. Mm -hmm. You could go File, Import, and then choose what you want to bring in. Or the simplest way is to just grab whatever footage you want, however many files, and just drag them into your project panel. Mm -hmm. Make sense? All right, so you're gonna be working off of all video, but I want to show you a few things here real quick. All right, so see that right there, the purple, and let me make the thumbnails bigger. Now mm -hmm. do you see it easier? Yeah. Purple and green. Purple would be video. Let's see something real fast. If I go here and there we go. Okay. Now I can tell you everything. All right. Purple is video only. Mm -hmm. That's like your motion graphics. And it's a film strip icon. The film strip icon with the audio waves, that's video and audio. So that could be a video or motion graphics with audio. That just means there's video and audio. Mm -hmm. So just video, video and audio, just an image, that's what that looks like, mm -hmm. and just audio, it's just the waves. So just by looking at your thumbnails, you could tell what the file is. You good so far? Mm -hmm. And whenever I'm working, I always work uh, organized. So your little folder icon down here at the bottom corner of your project panel. So I can make one called art. And I'd put my individual artwork in there. You could always twirl open or closed with a little carrot next to each folder. Uh, and then I'd make a folder for footage. I usually just do FTG for short. And that would be examples of all of that. So the last one I make is a folder for sequences. And I actually do an uh, audio one too. I accidentally grabbed the audio and put it in the wrong folder. So just to fix that, you know, you could just click and drag. Uh, like I could go from folder to folder. Now it's all lined up. What I'm going to do is usually this is closed. So I'm going to close that. My work and what I suggest you do. So it's window workspaces. Mm -hmm. Editing. Because you're going to be doing basic editing. And this whole video is just about basic editing window, and then you said workspaces? Mm-hmm. Window at the top, menu, workspaces, and then you choose your editing workspace. You good so far? Mm -hmm. And it's basically a few panels. You've got your project panel. That's where you bring all your footage in. So it's like your library. Mm -hmm. You've got your program panel. That's going to show you where, what the playheads hovered over. We'll get to that when we bring in our footage. You have your tools and your timeline. Mm -hmm. See this black line between all the panels? Mm -hmm. You could always click and drag. You got to hold down on your mouse or trackpad, and that lets you customize the width and height of each panel. 
okay? Whatever panel you're clicked on will have this blue highlight around it. Do you see that? Mm -hmm. That's incredibly important because based upon what panel you have selected, it's going to affect what you're doing. Yeah. So like if I've got artwork and I hit copy and paste, it's going to copy and paste it in here as opposed to if I had it in my timeline and I copied and pasted. Mm -hmm. So you always got to make sure you're clicked on the right panel for what you're doing. That's just a general rule of thumb. Any questions so far? No. All right. So here's what your workflow is going to be. You got the way I suggest doing it. Mm -hmm. You're going to be working off of audio and video because you're going to be doing technical editing. You're just doing cuts. You're not doing anything creative. It's just trimming down footage. That's what a lot of people do. All right. So what I would suggest, you got two options. If I click and drag from my project panel to my timeline, mm -hmm. it's going to create a timeline that matches that. It's going to be the same aspect ratio, meaning your dimensions, your length, width, your, your width and height. It's going to be the same frame rate, uh, you know, what frame rate you shot it at, 24 frames, 30 frames per second. It's going to be the correct duration, the length of your footage, okay? And it's also going to name your sequence based on what your file was called. That's mm -hmm. one way. Or you could just right click and choose new sequence from clip. Either or, they both do the same thing. So now we've got a new icon. This one right here. This one is different. It's a series of layers with a playhead icon. That's how you know it's a sequence. Do you see the difference between all the different icons? So that's a sequence because it's made up of what? You see these layers? Mm -hmm. So like if I had this and... this. See how I've got different layers and different footage? Mm -hmm. That's what that's resembling. The different uh, layers in your timeline. And see, here's my playhead. See, that's what that symbol means. That's oh, your playhead. Okay. These are the layers in your timeline. So it's like, this is like the working area. And then this is kind of like the preview of like what's there. And this is where yeah. you just store all the things you're going to make with your video. So mm -hmm. if you've got any music, you're going to store it in here. It's just, it's a giant library. It's your collection. Yeah. You assemble it and edit it in the timeline. Mm -hmm. So this is for storing your stuff. This is for seeing where the playhead is. So if I move this, that's where my playhead is. And watch how it changes. See, there's where my playhead is. And that's what we're seeing now. Mm -hmm. So that's just showing you where you're at your playhead. The program monitor will always show you what the viewer is going to see. So when your video is all done being edited and watchable, like you've rendered it out, this is what they're going to see. Mm -hmm. Okay. So I'm going to delete all this stuff, and we're just going to work off of this one. So I'm going to just right-click, new sequence from clips. So now I've got two sequences open. You could have as many sequences open in, in your timeline as you want. Whichever one you're selecting on, that's what you're going to be working on. Mm -hmm. Make sense? I'm going to get rid of this one because it's empty. Okay, so all we did was we made our new sequence, and I store my sequences in the sequence folder just so I can easily find them. Make sense? Mm -hmm. All right. Now, what we've done here, I would call a rough cut, just because I just put the footage in and that's it. So this one is 1210B right here. You could always click in between these panels to make them longer or shorter. I'm going to call that rough cut because, see, now I know it's my rough cut. So I could always go back to it. What I do next is I duplicate my rough cut <clears throat> so that I can – you always want to work non-destructively. You want something to go back to. Mm -hmm. So to duplicate it, you just select it in your timeline. Now, you'll notice whenever you're in your panel, it's going to highlight. And see, this is not selected. That's selected. See how it lit up? And you see over here how that lit up? That's not selected, now it's selected. Mm -hmm. So whenever you select something, it's gonna light up. So you look at what panel you're in and what's lit up. So I wanna be in my project panel with this lit up. I'm gonna right click and I'm gonna choose duplicate. This is how you work non-destructively. So you always have something to go back to if something goes wrong. And I'm gonna just rename it. I'm gonna call it edit 01. You duplicated the original file or the rough cut? I duplicated my rough cut Okay. In here, I just renamed it Rough Cut so I knew what it was. 
Oh, okay. You know what I mean? But it's a duplicate of the first one or no? Yes. Oh, okay. All we did was we duplicated. Now it's not open. To open it, you have to double click on it in your project panel. So now I've got my edit and my rough cut. Mm -hmm. Make sense? Okay. All right. Now, watch what happens. Here's why I work this way. Let's pretend you just want to cut out all the flubs. Okay? Mm -hmm. You can always, like I said, click and drag in between to make things bigger. And with your layers, see up here V, that's for video. A is for audio. Okay? So the video is the video layers. The audio is the audio layers. Make sense so far? Mm -hmm. Since this was filmed, this is called synchronous media, meaning the video and the audio are lined up. They're in sync. Watch what happens. If I click on just my audio and I move it, this red stuff appears. That's showing it's no longer in sync. Oh, See the so difference? Then, uh, the video can be playing, but the audio is off. Oh, so you like separated it. Yes. Interesting. Yes. So look out for that. And it tells you exactly how much it's off by. Mm -hmm. I'm off by three seconds, no, three minutes, two seconds, 11 frames. All right. I'm going to hit Command Z to undo or Control Z to undo. Make sense so far? Mm -hmm. All right. And while we're at it, let's talk about time code. Time code goes hours, minutes, seconds, frames. Hours, minutes, seconds, frames. Okay? Mm -hmm. So when I move that over, it's saying I'm off three minutes, three seconds, 21 frames. So I know exactly how much that went off by. So this will help you when you're doing your time cut edits. That's the part of technical editing is using time code to trim. Hours, minutes, seconds, frames. Not all software lets you see frames. So, you know, if you were just doing time code off of minutes and seconds, you ignore the last number and just do your minutes and seconds with the middle two numbers. Mm -hmm. Okay. So I'm going to do some quick cuts just to show you the difference of working with a duplicate and your original. So wherever your playhead is, is right here, okay? Mm -hmm. And it's showing us right there. You can, you got two ways of zooming in on your timeline. You could grab this little handle down here and magnify. This is also your height, see like that. Mm -hmm. You could also click and drag here to change your height to see things more easily. Or you could hold down the Alt or Option and hover over one of those and use your mouse wheel to magnify, okay. okay? So you can do it by clicking and dragging in between the two, wait for the icon to change. Or you could hold down Alt or Option, use your mouse wheel, and magnify that way. So you can magnify vertically to see your thumbnails better, your audio waves better. You could also hit plus or minus on your keyboard to magnify in your timeline to see it better, okay? Mm -hmm. How do you change the colors of the... Clips? Yeah. I'll show you that in a second. All right, let me zoom out here. Now, I want to show you one more important thing, and then we'll dive into editing. Your most important quick commands, your quick, your short keys, hot keys, up and down take you to the beginning or end of a clip or from cut to cut, mm -hmm. okay? That's up and down arrows on your keyboard. Left and right will take you one frame at a time. So if you look at my time code over here, mm -hmm. it's moving one frame at a time. If I hold down, nope, yep, it's just one frame at a time. Make sense? Up, down is going from cut to cut or beginning to end of a clip. Left and right will take you one frame at a time. Mm -hmm. So we're going to do some cuts, and then I'm going to show you color coding, all right? Mm -hmm. So I want to hit my plus to zoom in a little bit. See how you can zoom in on the time? The time is what we're zooming in on, so we're seeing our timeline better. You could click and drag here. If you use your mouse wheel, that'll take you along your timeline. Mm -hmm. If you hold down Alt or Option, and mouse wheel, that'll zoom in and out of your timeline. So you could hold down Alt or Option to zoom in and out, release it, then use your mouse wheel to pan around your timeline. Starting to see how that works? Mm -hmm. Okay, so this is roughly around where we want to start. So I'm roughly where I want to be. And 
and my left and right arrows will take me one frame at a time, okay? You with me so far? Mm -hmm. Now here is your editing workflow. Collect all of your footage like we just did. That's step one. Use only your best takes and your best footage. That's step two. Bring it into your timeline. Step three. Step four is you start editing. You always want to come in on a good frame and go out on a good frame, okay? I'm gonna show you what I mean by that. If I start here, her hand is up for no reason and it looks a little weird. Mm -hmm. I hit the down key by accident, the down arrow. So you could also scrub with your playhead by clicking and dragging. I don't wanna have too much space of dead space. It's like right about here. She's not moving, there's no blur. She's smiling, she's in the frame, it's in focus. That's an example of coming in on a good frame. Mm -hmm. Make sense to you? Yeah. Okay, so if you look right here my timeline, I only have the video channel selected, okay? It, now box selecting is when you click, hold down and drag. See the box appearing? Mm -hmm. That's also called a marquee. Some people call it marquee selecting, some people call it box selecting. So the main point is you want to, for what you're doing, your technical editing, you want to cut all your layers at the same time. Mm -hmm. So I'm just going to hold down my left mouse key, click and drag, box select or marquee select, the two of them. I've got my audio and my video selected, they're both highlighted, see that? But there's three things in your timeline, not- Ah, two. okay, it looks like three. The audio is in stereo. That's the left and right channel. That's why it looks like three things. Oh, so it's left Good and eye. right, left audio, right audio, and mm -hmm. video? Okay. That's because this was recorded in stereo. Yeah. I'll talk to you a little bit more about mono audio. Like this was recorded in mono because it uh, was through the Zoom recorder. It had to be no latency, yeah. meaning no delay. So recording mono, there's no delay. That's why that's a, a mono channel this is stereo. Mm -hmm. Good eye, good question. So you see it is, let me shrink this a little bit. It's one track of audio, one track of video. If we're like, say there's music, that'd be another track of audio mm -hmm. or layer. We call them tracks though. Okay, so I've got everything selected. I've got my playhead, where I, my playhead is where I want. I'm on a good frame to come in on. What I suggest you do is hit Command K or Control K. That will create a cut over every layer in your timeline, every item that's selected where the playhead is. Command K or Control K and watch what happens. That made my cut. Mm -hmm. Okay? Oh, nice. Now, I'm gonna zoom out a little bit with my minus keys so you see my whole timeline. Mm -hmm. We don't need any of this. Nothing's going on that we wanna keep. We're going to get rid of it, okay? So again, if I select, only my video is selected. If I hold down my mouse, okay. left click and drag, now I've box selected, I've got them both. I hit the backspace key on my keyboard and they're gone, mm -hmm. okay? Now, we have a gap in our timeline, okay? It's still the same length, but we got rid of that. Anytime there's gaps in your timeline, you're gonna see black frames. We call those dead frames, meaning there's gaps in your timeline. So then we move it down? Exactly, we're gonna move it down, very good. The fast way of doing that, right click with your mouse, hover over, choose ripple delete, left click on that, now closes the gap. Mm -hmm. Ripple delete closes gaps between clips, but it changes the length of your timeline. I'll show you what I mean by that. This is how long it was, okay? I'm gonna hit the O key on my keyboard to set an out frame. We're gonna go out in on that on a sec, but I just wanna show you. So watch it, see right here? Mm -hmm. That's how long it was. If I right click here in my gap, left click on the ripple delete option, see the length of our video has changed because we ripple deleted. Mm -hmm. We got rid of what was there. Now the duration is different, make sense? Mm -hmm. You're going to want short duration videos because that's what we're doing. We're cutting up stuff for social media. So that's fine that this changed. I just want you to notice whenever you ripple delete, you're changing the duration of your timeline. Mm -hmm. Make sense? Okay, so we did that. And let's use our plus and minus keys to zoom in. And we can see that right here, there's a flub. Now, when I'm editing, I always delete 
in the audio file, I, I choose silence. I do not delete. Because if you delete, it changes the length of your audio, and then the audio doesn't line up anymore. That's why I silence it. That's why you see these gaps. So I know where my flubs are. I also make the flubs quieter, just so you can tell visually you know, where the good take ends. Now, we're going to get into the meat and potatoes of, yes, we're technical editing, but we're going to technically edit as best as we can. This is going from a basic to a little more intermediate in just this one step. You ready? Mm -hmm. Okay. So we know the flub is coming up here because I decreased the volume. I could just visually tell. So between here and here's where the next good take starts, right here. There's a camera shift. If we chose to cut here, one, it's a bad cut because we're cutting out some of the good audio. You see it there? Two, her arm is up. Whereas we saw at the start of the next take, her arm's down. Mm -hmm. Make sense? So it's still a little up, but you want to try and have the shots match. Like if I come in here with her mouth open and then cut here with her mouth closed, it's going to look funny. Mm -hmm. So if I go a few frames, mouth open, I'm going to go out when her mouth is open and come in when her mouth is open to hide the cut. That's called cutting on action. It's going to look similar and help hide the cut and make it look more deliberate. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Okay. So review our process. Bring in all the footage you need to work with. Step one. Step two, use only your best takes and your best footage. Step three, bring what you need into your timeline. Step four, come in on a good frame, come out on a good frame for when you're making your edits. And we're going to only keep the parts we want, okay? Editing is not just what you keep, but more importantly, what you cut out. Mm -hmm. So you got to always think of that. True. And thank you. And one more thing I want to show you. See my playhead right here? Mm -hmm. Remember this sentence. There's two sides to every cut. Okay? That's going to be really important when you start work with motion graphics and overlays. Because say you have something where it's like a picture of a sunset, and then the next picture is a picture of a sports car. If you cut on the wrong frame and move those clips around, you'll see the wrong image um, at the beginning of that clip based on how you cut. And I'm going to give you an example of that. Okay, so her mouth's open, and we're going to come in when the mouth's open over there. The other thing to realize when I say there's two sides to a cut, pretend we've got one quarter of a second. Let's say, so if this was shot at 30 frames per second, seven frames would roughly be about a quarter of a second, seven or eight frames. It's one-fourth that time. Make sense? Mm -hmm. So if I cut here, and we'll pretend there's eight frames. That's a quarter of a second. My playhead was where I wanted my cut. And, you know, it's a good cut, Command or Control K. I'm using my mouse wheel to go through my timeline. I'm here. Now I'm going to use my, my left and right arrow keys. I'm using my right arrow key to find her mouth's open. Now here, we also got to look and say, was her head tilted up or was her chin down? Her chin, I think, was about here. So I'm going to hit, I'm going to select both of them by box selecting. If you ever do this, just click on your little bar here and move it there. So I'm going to Control K or Command K. Both of them are selected. I'm going to box select here, backspace to delete on my keyboard, right click, left click to ripple. So if I go one frame with my left and right, that matches perfectly because I remembered where her jaw was when I cut. Mm -hmm. Let me go forward a few frames. See, if I cut there, her jaw would be up higher and the cut would be more obvious. See, with her jaw there, it's very subtle. See that? Oh, yeah. Look at where their head is, the angle of their head, things like that. That's how you hide your cuts. Mm -hmm. That's getting a little deeper into it. But like I was saying, I'm looking at where her jaw is, and I can always right, right, uh, left and right arrow to go one frame at a time, and that's a really close match, and it looks deliberate. Mm -hmm. That's... That's everything right there with technical editing. If you can keep an eye between your cuts, look at their body language and their postures, their mouth open, closed, things like that, the least amount of change from cut to cut, the more you're going to hide your edit. Mm -hmm. Make sense? Yes. Okay. And we can see here uh, the volume drop. That means there's a flub here. 
So I'm going to do one more cut, and then we're going to talk about labeling with colors. So I'm using my plus and minus keys to zoom in and out. There's a big downtime between takes. So I'm going to look again. And this time, I'm going to do it from this end. So she's still getting her nerves ready. Right there. So her chin's a little bit up, not too high up. She's getting ready to start talking. And you can see there's not a lot of dead space. So say there's a quarter of a second here, quarter of a second on the other time, you know, adds up to be about half a second in between words. You want to watch your pacing and your rhythm when you're editing. And I'm going to show you what that means in a second. So I'm going to cut here, control K. So I box selected, left click and drag. So that's where her head is. We're gonna press the up arrow on the keyboard to go back. Here's where our flub is. So she's getting ready. Her mouth would be too open here because it wasn't that open in the other cut. So I'm gonna pick there. That looks like a pretty close match. Make sense? Mm -hmm. Left click and drag to box select, control K or command K. I'm zooming out with my plus and minus keys, box selecting again, backspace on my keyboard, right click in the gap, left click on ripple delete to ripple delete. Now I hit my left and right arrows. That's a very close match. So that's a good edit. Now here's our pacing and rhythm. The amount on this cut of each side. We had to cut a little closer here because of the pause she took. So let's see what this is gonna look like. Right here, it's almost about the same amount of a gap when she's taking her breath. That's a pretty good pacing. Mm -hmm. You don't want your sentences to jam together. You need a little bit of padding on each side of the words. So the viewer and the listener can uh, absorb it. So we'll go listen again. Like that. Mm -hmm. That's your pacing, your rhythm. How much space is on each side of the cut? There's two sides to every cut. This side and that side. Make sense? What happens if like she's talking about like another um, subject and like whenever you go later on and then mm -hmm. whenever, because whenever you're making this second cut, what if she's talking about something completely different and... So you got a couple things you could do. Uh, you could put a graphic or some text here mm -hmm. to say, here's our thoughts on topic B and then go into it. So you could use text and images to smooth out bumpy parts in your story. Gotcha. That makes sense? Mm -hmm. All right. Or you could just edit this one part from here to here as one video, and this is a second video. Mm -hmm. Just a couple of options. That's the other thing is it's not just, you know, using on your best footage, coming in on a good frame, going out on a good frame. It's what you keep, what you take out, and then how you assemble it. You could put things in any order you want your timeline. There's another important thing. So I could select both of these and move them down there. You tell the story the way you want. Mm -hmm. So if things flow better and make more sense, you can move them around. Or sometimes someone will say, you know what? I have a better answer to that. That's when you shuffle stuff around your timeline. That's what editing is. The best parts in the order that makes the most sense. Does that help? Mm -hmm. Okay, now you wanted to know about labeling because labeling is a huge part of what I do. You know. Uh, yeah. So when you first open up Premiere, I think it is, oh, another thing. See my magnifying glass right here? I mean, yes. I mean the magnet? Mm -hmm. I want that clicked on. That means um, it's going to link, it's going to snap my clips. I'll show you what that means. If I click and drag here, fine. But say I want to move this. See how it snapped at the end? Mm-hmm. Now there's no gaps between those clips. Watch what happens if I turn that off. I'm gonna move it. I'm gonna click off. Snap is now turned off. See, I've got dead frames. So if I go like this, see there's black oh, frames. Yeah. So now I'm gonna turn snap back on. So it's best to always have it on? For the yes. Part. Now here's a great question. Pretend you're like, well, I, I, I need snap. I don't want those, but I want things to come in at a certain time and not snap. And I'll show you what I mean by that. So here is a graphic, okay? See how it snapped where that cut was? Mm -hmm. Like that? Yes. Or you could have it snapped where the playhead is. 
So if you need things at a precise moment, not where a cut is, move the playhead to where you want. You could use your left and right arrow keys. Let's say we want it right here. Now, snap is on, and I'm gonna snap this, not to where the cut is. Let me zoom in so you can see. I don't want snap to the cut. I want snap to where the playhead is. That's how you override and get something to snap where you want, but not to an edge. Okay. Okay. Go Keep ahead. snap on, move your playhead, and then snap it to where the playhead is. Make sense? Mm -hmm. That's a great question. Got you. Now, this right here, linked selection, mine is turned off. When it's blue, it's on. When it's, you know, not, when it's white, it's off. So, what I believe, so I can select my video or my audio. And what this means is I can have my audio start at a different time for my video just by grabbing an edge and changing it. See how I did that? Yeah. So I'm gonna zoom in so you can see this. See how that red arrow is pointing to the left? No, it's pointing to the right. Oh, I'm sorry, it's my, you know, oh. it's my dyslexia, <laughs> I'm sorry. All right, yes, sorry I have dyslexia, all right. The arrow's pointing to the right. That means I'm gonna be editing, moving in that direction. See how it changed to the left right there? Oh, yeah. So always watch it. That means I'm gonna be editing in that direction. Okay? Mm -hmm. Now I'm gonna turn this on, linked selection. Now let's see what happens. See how it linked both of them? Now it's selecting both. So now I keep mine linked. The audio and the video are now linked. So if you wanna work with cutting the audio and video at the same time, Make sure that's turned on. Mm -hmm. But if you want to cut them separately, which happens a lot, you turn it off. Because say you're like, she says, um, there. Well, I don't want the, um. We'll pretend she says, um. So I can just move my playhead there and snap it to there. Okay. Okay? It's faster to work this way. But if you're concerned and you're not going to be doing a lot of that, I would have this selected so you select both of them at the same time, your mm -hmm. audio and your video. That's all that is. It's that button right there. This is snap. Those are the two you got to be concerned about. Um, and then let me see. Add marker, time display settings. All right, this should be it. By default, when you first open Premiere, it's going to color code every cut the same. Mm -hmm. Okay? And you don't want that. So to turn that off, click on the wrench and click off show source clip name and label. It's the very top most option. Mine, it's already off, that's why it's white, but it, when you start up, it's blue. See the check blue that's on? Click there to turn it off. Mm -hmm. So I'll show you, here's the default. If I colorize this, so I've got my audio and video selected. If I right click and choose, let's say mango, all the clips turned mango. I don't want that, I just want one set of the clip. So click your wrench. Turn that off, show source clip and name and label. Now, when I select my clips, right click, label, mango, just that cut is mango. Mm -hmm. Now, while we're talking about colorizing clips, it's very helpful. You say you've got a two person interview, you can color code one person green, you can color code the other person's clips yellow. So just by looking at your timeline, you can tell who's speaking. I colorize my clips uh, green, yellow, red, yes, no, maybe. This is for parts of interviews or B-roll footage that you're editing. So say this part was a yes. I'm gonna select both, right click, label, and I say green. Green is yes, yellow is maybe, red is no. So I'm gonna say I don't want this part. I'm gonna select it and then choose rows. And then for here, I say, well, this is a maybe. Again, I'm just clicking between those. Right click, label, yellow, yes, no, maybe. Color coding is very helpful, especially with the yes, no, maybe setting. Or if you've got two interviews or multiple interviews, you could color code them. So just by looking at your timeline, or say you've got a long interview like a podcast, and this is your first question, your second question, your third question. You've got multiple people answering the same questions. Well, if all the questions have the same color code, you can quickly grab from each interview the parts you want and assemble it. Mm -hmm. So color coding, being organized in your project panel, those things will help you edit. So do you have any questions about simple cuts with Command or Control K where your playhead is? Up and down takes you from cut to cut or the beginning of a clip. Left and right takes you from frame to frame. You want to try and match your action between your cuts. 
-hmm. to help hide them. What if, say, the person, like, where you cut it at is at a part where the information that they're saying is what you want, but the the actual, like, video, the visual of them doesn't line up with the previous one? Okay, so someone's talking about a zebra at the zoo, but mm-hmm. that audio is underneath the sports car. Yeah. You could, since we have the link select turned off, you could cut that audio. Pretend it's this audio right here. I'm going to control K to cut. I'm going to color code this just so we can see what's going on. I'm going to make this uh, lavender. All right. Let's pretend I want my lavender under the red. I can grab my red and move it because this is turned off, then move that to where that is, and then have that line up with what it needs to be. So you can move your audio and video to make it match what you're talking about. Yeah, but... Because sometimes you'll have someone do a voiceover on video. Yeah, but I feel like lots of the voiceovers, there's not like a person that's there like talking still. You might shoot that afterward, but that that is basically what you do is you would trim and move around the parts you need. Or let's do this. We'll grab this image. Pretend this image, uh, you could always change the length of it right here. Oh, there's one more thing I got to talk about. In point, out point, all that. All right. So I'm going to grab this clip right here. I'm going to right click in here to clear my in and out point. All right. This is the whole clip. See it? Mm-hmm. Nothing was done. There's no cuts. You see all the flubs. It's all there. Let's pretend I cut right here. Okay. So I box select, control K or command K. I cut where my playhead is. I'm going to hit delete. This footage is still there. See how I changed it by dragging? Mm-hmm. Do that again? Yeah. So see how I. Oh, yeah. Okay. There's your in point where you cut. And then where you make your next cut, that's your out point. So this is one clip. There's an in where it begins and an out where it ends. Mm -hmm. When you cut and there's still stuff there, that's called the head. And on the other section. The tail. Exactly. The tail. So you got your in point, your out point, your head, and your tail. So then basically if you had that playing, um, when there is, say there's a head and tail and you have it playing in the beginning, there won't be audio lined up with it. It'll just be the video. And then all of a sudden, if you cut it that way, if you cut it that way, yeah. So it's all what you want to do with it. Always remember the viewer is only going to see what you have in your timeline, how you cut it. Mm -hmm. The head and the tail of all this footage still exists. Yeah. We're working non-destructively. So if I took this clip and I dragged it over here, oops. I drag it over here. If I drag here, it's still there. Yeah. I'm just saying Command Z to undo. Now, things to watch out for when you work with your clips. Let's zoom in a little bit. Watch what happens. See this up and down arrow? Mm -hmm. That is your opacity. Is that controlling the volume? No, it's controlling the opacity. Right here, it's opacity. So if I do this... It's, oh, that's the opacity of the video? Uh-huh. But then that's if you did it on, vo- on the audio, it doesn't... Exactly. That's okay. your volume. Volume up, volume down. Okay. So watch out for that when you're clipping, when you're dragging stuff around your timeline. Yeah, you might through. accidentally change the opacity or change the volume. Oh, okay. So just be careful that your volume should be at zero yeah. if you're not changing your volume, and your opacity should be at 100 if you want it to be fully opaque. Mm-hmm. So that's, that's good questions. Any questions so far? No. All right, let's pretend we're done. We want to end it right here, okay? Mm -hmm. So you've got your head and your tail, your in point, your out point. Your timeline, this is the whole timeline. Like if I have this over here, Mm -hmm. it's going to think my video is 14 minutes and 56 seconds long. See that? Yeah. But if I just want to end my render here, here's how you do that. Your timeline, you can set an in point and your out point for where you want to render. So let's pretend I want to start after the opening song right there. Let's Mm -hmm. pretend I hit I for in. Okay. And I go to where I want my video to end. I'll use my down arrow to select right there. I hit, let's pick a good frame right there. I use my left keys to go back a few frames. I'm going to hit O for out, in and out. There's the head of my timeline. There's the tail of my timeline. The viewer will only see this part when it renders between these two blue bars. Make sense? 
I is the input, which is also the head. O is the output, which is the tail. Well, don't forget, the head is the beginning of the clip. The head really, for this timeline, is over here. Yeah. This is the end point. The head and the end point are different, just as the tail over here and the out point over there. The in point and the out point are just what your cut or your render are going to be. In put or uh, in, in point. Oh. Sorry, okay. in point. Gotcha. In point, out point. I gotcha. and O, in and out. Mm -hmm. So the in point is where you start your cut or you start your render. The out point is where you make your out cut. In point. Mm hmm. Sorry. Is, that is where you start. Mm -hmm. Your it's my magical Delco accent. <laughs> input endpoint start is the start of your mm -hmm. video. Yes, or your cut. It could be either. I'm teaching you to edit down here in the timeline, just because you're doing technical editing. It's faster. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, let me show you one more thing. If I double click on this video in my project panel. Mm -hmm. It's going to, oh, it opened it over here. All right, fine, that shouldn't have happened. Uh, let's go back to that, it's right here. I'm gonna double click on it in the timeline. When I double click on the timeline, then it opens in the source panel. All right, quick thing. The program is what the viewer is gonna see. The source is your original footage unedited. Okay. So if I move my playhead here, see how we're seeing two different things, even if it's the same clip? Yeah. This is program where our playhead is, and this is your source, the raw video footage. Yeah. You could have two different things. So let's pretend I want to, boom, boom, boom. All right, let's say we want to go right before the fly through. So I'm using my left and right arrows. They still work here. Mm -hmm. There's the fly through. That's the beginning of it. So if I hit I, see how that clip edited in my timeline? Mm -hmm. So you can edit up here before bringing it down there. I'm going to hit O right there, so you can change your in and out points in the source panel. Oh, so say if I wanted to just like, I can edit the raw video in there and then make it just like smaller. So yes. I'm working, so then once I drag it into your the timeline, timeline smaller. Mm -hmm. I can edit a smaller video rather yes. than having such a long thing. Exactly, okay. I was just gonna explain that to you. So let me hit, okay, so here's a full clip. Mm -hmm. Let's pretend you want this section and that section only but you don't want a huge timeline. Yeah. If I right click in here and I choose display mode, mm -hmm. oh, it's not letting me show the audio. That's wild. It used to let you show the audio under display mode. Oh well, that's sad. All right, so I guess what you're gonna have to do is bring it down into here and say, you know, I want this hit cut to about there. Yeah, I'm just doing this roughly hit cut. Get rid of that. And then say you want this part over here. Obviously you're gonna wanna try and line up your action. Hit cut, go there, hit cut. Get rid of that. Oops, no, that's what I wanted to keep, get rid of that. Right click there and then you get rid of that part. So you're gonna have to do it that way because for some odd reason, Adobe got rid of that setting. Oh, so I have to edit it, edit it in the timeline for anyways? For what you want because it was not giving me the option of seeing the audio only in here. Unless you wanna actually listen to it. Like if I go back to my source monitor, it's not even displaying the audio. This There's something wrong with the program today. Hmm. You should be able to right click um, display mode, they go to audio. That's not working today. That's trying, so you're trying to display the audio of the mm -hmm. raw clip? But the important thing is down here it's working. Yeah. So you could always do it by listening or looking at the waves. Okay. You know what I mean? Like I said, Adobe is incredibly buggy. Save frequently, yeah. save often. And whatever sequence you have, that's the one you work on. So to render, I'm gonna save. This is the part I wanna render, let's pre pretend. You go to export. They've made Premiere one window. Mm -hmm. So say you're like, oh, no, wait, wait, I, I left out, you know, a motion graphic. I got to go back. Click on edit. So this is your edit workspace. Mm -hmm. And this is for rendering, export. Oh, okay. So you just hop between them. Yeah. Makes sense? Okie doke. So we're going back to export to render. You name it what you want. 
This is our first tutorial because we'll be doing multiple ones of these. Uh, so you name it what you want, click here on the blue text to change where it's going. I'm just gonna put it on the desktop for now, but normally it'd be in a project folder, blah, 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 dates, all that stuff. So I'm gonna hit save. Very carefully look at your settings. Mm -hmm. You are gonna be using H264. And that would be right here. That's your okay. drop down. H264 works on a Mac, works on a PC, and it's used for social media. Okay. You gotta keep your defaults. I always eyeball this to make sure it matches. My video, 1920 by 1080, that's 2K resolution. Over here, 1920 by 1080, it matches. There's two things. The default is entire source. That's your whole timeline. Mm -hmm. You're not going to want that. We set an in and out point, change your drop down to source in and out. Now see how it's only rendering that part? As opposed okay. to right there, it's doing the whole timeline. That's how you do where you set your in point, your out point, and your timeline. Okay. okay. So that so basically, anytime I am editing, I have to always set the in point and out point in your timeline. If you only want to render a certain part, okay. Otherwise, you could do the whole timeline. Okay. But you probably will be doing it this way. Okay. Makes sense. Mm -hmm. And then your last step is you just hit export and wait for it to export, and that's about it. I mean, you can render just the audio. Like when I'm cleaning up the audio from our video shoots, I export just a WAV file. Then I clean oh. up, I clean up the WAV file in Adobe Audition. Mm -hmm. Then I import it back into Premiere, line it up with the video clips, mm -hmm. and work off of that. Gotcha. Okay. And there you go. You're all done. And that's a quick intro to technical editing. Any questions? No. All right. Well, I'll put this up on YouTube, send you the link, and you could ask me any day, you know, okay. here, there, just come and say, yeah, I got a question on this or that, but... It's really just as simple as up and down to go from clip to clip, mm -hmm. left and right to go frame by frame, try and match up your actions between your cuts, huh. and choose your yeah. in and out point. Like, you've already got your time code written down, and you know it's hours, minutes, seconds, frames. True. Now, if you only did minutes and seconds because you were working on short video clips, yeah. just focus on these middle two numbers separated by the commas. Yeah. Or colons, yeah. Okay. All right. Slay. Well, thank you very much. All right. Yeah, and I'll let you know when this is up. All right. Cool. Thank you. All right. No problem at all. Have fun editing. I will. <laughs>